Welcome to the Deep Didgeridoo playing tutorial. Uh, before we start with the exercises, we need to understand why should anybody play Deep Didgeridoos. And uh, there are many reasons why. One of them is that generally Deep Didgeridoos are richer than their high counterparts. They are more powerful, they are more primordial, um, they are more mystic and in general they are sexier. And uh, when you compare same rhythm played on a high didgeridoo and on a low didgeridoo, usually that rhythm will sound better on a low didgeridoo. some reasons why not to play a deep didgeridoo. Well, one of the reasons is that they are generally more difficult to play. They are more difficult to fit into a car, plane, train, anywhere, because deep didgeridoos are usually long didgeridoos. And also, they are more difficult for the sound system. So, below a certain point, uh, didgeridoos tend to get so deep that the subwoofers aren't really designed, most of them, there are some that are, uh, to deal with that kind of frequencies. So the best way to master playing deep didgeridoos is to master to play even deeper didgeridoos. And this is not a fancy tool that I will show you now, but it's something that really helped me to uh, gain power, to gain elasticity, to gain relaxation needed to play effortlessly the didgeridoos. So your tool is a basic PVC tube and you need to have several types of extension. So the one that I use is 40 millimeters outside diameter and I think 35 inside. And you need pieces of one meter, of half meter and of 25 centimeters. And so, I will show you now how to assemble the PVC tube. Here, it's assembled. So it's a 2 meters now, and probably everyone will be able to play it. <coughs> oh, but not me. Just kidding. <coughs> so, once you are able to play 2 meters, you can add half a meter, and you pray to God that you will not embarrass yourself. So, this is a snack fit, it should be fine. So then you try, you can do this. It starts to be deep. And in case you can't do this, you go in something like this. Then you remove the half a meter extension and you add 25 centimeter extension. And then you play that. Okay, so once you're able to do different progressions that I will show you on a certain length, you're allowed to extend it. Now, the digit I will play in this exercises will be 4 meter 22 centimeters and a half long. This is, I think, 20 something hertz. It hurts a bit. And what I did with it is that I changed uh, with another extension, so basically I have a piece of half a meter and I cut it in two pieces. Because later, if you want to add this kind of extensions, they have the female ending. And you need to insert your dish with a male ending into female. So the way it is ending now, it's ending with a female extension. And this doesn't work. So basically, you have to reverse at some point, and for this I had cut a piece of PVC so that it's male-male, and so you can open it up here, put it here, reverse everything, and then you have this side for your mouthpiece, and 
the same kind of uh, side, the male side, as your bell ending. So one more thing that is important is that, so this is the other ending, it's also male. And one more thing that is important is that if your tubes are a bit old, or even if they are new, sometimes they don't really, they're not really airtight. So if that is the case, it will be so difficult to play that you won't like it. So I recommend in case of doubt that you add a little bit of plastic to plastic. So you use duct tape, juice tape. And you seal all ends, all, all fittings uh, again. Uh, I have to do it with this tube because I have practiced a lot with this tube. I had it for many years, maybe not exactly the same uh, part of them, but most of them. So the rubbers are now quite loose, and when the dish bends a little bit, they usually leak so much air that it's unplayable. So, also you need to know that 4 meters and above is quite low and not many of you might reach this length. When I was practicing uh, a lot with deep digits, I used to play like 2 hours only deep digits and I was practicing a lot with just cylindric tubes and I think the longest I played was something like five and a half meters and that gave me a lot of mm, reserve of lip power of breath power that I can play normal low digits very easily because once you play something which is four or five meters long and two and a half meter dish feels like a high dish actually um, also what you will find that Playing just a cylinder cube, it's not very inspiring. So often you will want to add some uh, extensions which are wider and this will make the dish more interesting. However, I advise you to postpone that action and really stay in this asket kind of move, mood where uh, you just build up your lip power and your breath power. So we will start our didgeridoo training with a set of exercises that progress from very simple to a bit more challenging that will give you these superhuman powers. Um, we'll train them on a cylindrical tube which is designed as explained and the one I play here is uh, 4 meter to 22 centimeters long. When we get power to play that kind of quite unplayable instrument, every other deep didgeridoo will seem quite easy to play. So I really highly advise that you train on a, in, a, in a realm which is difficult for you, but possible. So how do these progressions go? The absolute first step is to relax. So if you're tense, if you're in a hurry, if you need to get on your plane, uh, there, are, there is not a very high chance of succeeding in your exercising. Feel your body and if you feel your shoulders are high and if you feel that you're, that you're frowning, you should relax first before you start. Because you need to be elastic and you cannot be elastic if you're crimped in this way. It's also important that you have a good setup. This means that um, preferably you have a microphone and headphones because in this way you will be able to follow what you play best and because you need to have a good response from the bell end and this bell end is like so far that I barely see it you know it's already like behind the horizon so you need to have uh, good feedback on what you play and a good acoustic room or even better if you have a microphone and, and uh, headphones this is even better for you that your body really starts to react with what it does sound-wise. 
So the first thing that you will need to do on a deep didgeridoo is to get the drone. So if the normal uh, tension of lips for the normal drone would be somewhere here, for the deep didgeridoos you have to relax your lips and play uh, slower. I usually uh, have to push my jaw a little bit further in order to connect the inside of the lips. So the armature needs to be thick. The inside of the lips have to touch and you, you want to try to keep that uh, lips closed from the inside but also closing from the outside because the outside will give some clarity. So you don't want to just do it in this way. You want to get this kind of rippling bubbles out. So you have to close your lips thick inside but also try to close them on the outside as well. You can start the drone by kind of spitting movement which will help the lips to start the first amplitude because the lips have relatively big amplitude when they play such a deep didgeridoo. So in this way you look for it and once you find it you just keep going with your breath from the lungs. You don't need to, to use the spinning movement to start, you can just start if you can. But for the beginning just go for, for any kind of trick that will uh, trigger your lips to vibrate and usually that spitting, small spitting sound is uh, the way to go. When you get a drone you need to try to play it as loud as, and, and as clear as possible. This will teach your lips to do, this, to do these big movements uh, in this high amplitude. The next step of learning deep didgeridoo playing is to learn the circular breathing on it. Basically, it's just a matter of the efficiency in which your lips vibrate and the efficiency in which your body can inhale. So there is nothing very different about it except that the back pressure is very low here. When you get this normal circular breathing, start to give it a little bit more air to pump it a little bit. So try to breathe a little bit more frequently just to practice that inhale. The next step is to add voice. This is one thing that is nice about the didgeridoos because they do not, they do not oppose um, your voice. So pretty much any sound you can make through your vocal cords will come out. So you can start by playing just one note or you can play an intro of your favorite song. a bit longer melodies that you composed a while ago. So the voice part is something that is so easy about it. For example, if you want to sing the major scale, it's easier than on the normal didgeridoo. You will be amazed at which uh, clarity that melody comes out. And this is because the drone is so much deeper than what you where you actually sing. 
The next step is to incorporate toots. Now that is a bit more tricky because when you uh, press your lips for the toots, you stretch your face and it goes a little bit it goes it goes tight in a way that it's relatively difficult to come back to drone. So the first step is just to play the first toot. And you need to make this connection smooth. When you can play the first toot, then expand to the other toots as well. The next step is to incorporate both uh, toots and voice. something a bit more complex. step is to make rhythms, simple rhythms at first, and we will take Dum Dum Takawaka and its variations. For the last step, we will take a little bit more complex rhythms. So we will develop this rhythm that I just played and we will include some air code as well. And this will make it more challenging because your mouth has to adapt to the change of movements and air pressures. It has to adapt to the change of lip tension and fall back to the drone immediately. It has to adapt to the movement away from the mouthpiece and coming back and hitting the drone instantly. So when you can do that, you can add some length to your ditch. So actually, all of these progressions are good for your normal digital training as well. You don't need to have a four and a half meter ditch to try it. You can try it on your regular ditch that you normally play. However, this logical progression will build up so much power uh, if you play it on such deep instruments that when you play normal instruments, they will feel so easy, so effortless because you will have so much air. It will be so easy to breathe. Remember that sometimes before you start the drone, you have to just lick your lips a little bit so that they are wet, so that they have a good adhesion one to another, so that they stick when they stick. Um, another thing to remember is that uh, you need to be gradual about this and not expect too much from day one. So your body needs to understand what you're asking of it and it will adjust itself. However, it cannot do it in one day or one week or even one month. So be patient, but be consistent. So please subscribe to this channel because it does motivate me to make these videos. 
and I don't have a lot of time so motivation is uh, something that will really push me uh, to make it more than I do more often we will explore more secrets in the video to come about how to uh, incorporate what we have just learned into, into a normal deep digital playing and as always remember spiral out keep going